friend to the inner sanctum. This is Raymond, your host. We, um, we have an expert on murder here tonight. He has a rather strange idea. Something about everybody being a potential murderer. Perhaps he's right. Perhaps one of us here, right in this room, is capable of committing a murder. Take a good look at your neighbor. Maybe he's the one. Or, uh, maybe it's you. <laughs> Sanctum Mysteries, by Hyman Brown, brings you one of Broadway's and Hollywood's best-known stars, Boris Karloff, now appearing in the smash Broadway hit, Arsenic and Old Lace. Tonight, Mr. Karloff appears as Herbert Lodge in Study for Murder, an original radio drama by Sigmund Miller. In one of the cells of the death house stands a man holding tightly under the bars. A dazed expression on his young face. He's alive and precious minutes move swiftly away. The curtain of death draws closer. It is only a few hours before his execution. Suddenly in the stillness there are footsteps. For a moment the dazed expression on Edward's face changes to fright. Hello, Sam. Hello. My name's Herbert Lodge. Are you from the governor? No, Sam. I'm just a psychologist. Oh, my work is to try to keep other people from doing the thing that you did. You can help me by answering a few questions. That's not going to do me any good. No, but you could at least help other people from making the same mistake. Oh, I've got to get out of here. If I want to live, I don't want to die. You were never convicted of a crime before, were you, Sam? No. No, I never even got a traffic ticket. I never harmed anyone in my life until that terrible night. You believe me, don't you? Why, of course I do. Please, Mr. Lodge. Please, you said you're a psychologist. Can't you do something for me? Can't you say I'm insane or something? No, Sam, I can't. You're not insane. But I... I never meant to kill her. My hands went for her throat as if they weren't my hands. It's so hard to believe. Me, who never even had a fist fight. Yeah. Very interesting. You didn't even hate your wife, did you, Sam? No. No, I didn't hate her. She used to get on my nerves. We used to fight a lot about money. But I never hated her. She was spending more money than I earned. She got you angry. She ridiculed your small earnings. That's right. How did you know? And she did that every time you had an argument about money. Yes. I couldn't stand it anymore. I know she didn't really mean it, telling me that I didn't work hard enough, but when she told me that last time, I don't know, my my hands went for a throat. You didn't feel you didn't feel any any kind of pity for her? I don't want to talk anymore. Please. Please leave me alone. I can't stand it. This one question is very important. You saw her dead on the floor. What were your reactions? For a minute, I was glad. Then suddenly I realized what I'd done and I got scared. I tried to revive her, tried to bring her back to life. You talked to her, didn't you? I don't remember much after that. You feel full of remorse now, don't you? No, I don't. I hate you. I hate everybody. Get out! Get out before I kill you, too! I'm a murderer, do you hear? I can kill! I can kill everybody! <laughs> All right, Sam. Thanks very much. We're going to have trouble taking him to the chair. Doesn't make any difference, Warden. It'll all be over in two hours. Makes a great difference. We don't want Edward's last few minutes to be agonizing terror. He was quite calm until you spoke to him. Well, no one has ever reconciled the death. These last few minutes are really of no importance. That's rather cold-blooded of you, Mr. Lodge. Perhaps it is. I'd imagine you'd be just as sensible. I'd prefer to think that all murderers are sick men and should be treated as such. Ah, oh, then perhaps we are not so far off from each other in our thinking. I'm trying to understand the disease of murder. A 
disease that all of us have, every one of us. You probably know that, well, that more than two-thirds of all murders are committed by what we call the average citizen. The most harmless, law-abiding man is capable of murder under certain circumstances. I, I'd like to observe the execution. Well, I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Why not? I don't understand your taking a dislike to me. Certainly I can do no harm. Well, you can do no good but satisfy a morbid curiosity. I really believe you'd enjoy watching a man being put to death. I don't like you, Mr. Lodge. You ought to take a good look at poor Edwards and say to yourself, there but for hard go I. Good night, sir. Well, Margaret, Edwards has just paid with his life. I managed to get a lot of valuable information out of him before he went to pieces. Herbert, maybe you ought to take a rest. Stop working on your book for a while. A vacation would do you good. Well, you're not worried about me, are you, Margaret? But no good can come of it at the rate you're going. Why, the only thing on your mind is, it, is me. Oh, you don't understand. I, I've got to know... I've got to know more about the, the desire to kill. All of us are capable of murder. And knowing that, that even I can commit murder, fills me with a horrible fascination. You don't know what you're saying, Herbert. I've got to explore the whole field of crime, track down every detail that leads to murder. Everyone I meet is a subject for study. And I myself am my own best subject. I've never felt so keen about anything in my life. I can't stop now. You're being a fire, Herbert. Well, yes, perhaps I am. But you can't write about fire unless you've been burned. Oh, please give it up. I don't like the underworld people you've been associating with. You mean Whitey? Yes. I can't stand him. Well, I'm sorry. But I'm going to see him again tonight. It's taken me a long time. But I've finally succeeded in forming a tribe of my own. A tribe? What are you talking about? It's the underworld term for gang. Why, you're out of your mind. You'll become a gangster. Oh, no, for temporary. But as the big brains of the mob, I'm going to see crime and murder from the first row. We're going to muffle in on some racketeer's territory. I absolutely forbid you to do it. Oh, please, Herbert. I've made up my mind. Don't waste your time trying to stop me, Margaret. I, uh, I don't want to be unpleasant with you. <laughs> We're going to cut in on Cannonball Jerry's racket. He's had it too long already. It's about time it was taken away from him. Cannonball's funny tough. As soon as he gets wise, he's going to go gandering for us. I wouldn't like to be in front of his choppers when he's mad. You don't have to worry about him. No? Well, you ain't seen him when he saw. I never will. We'll get him before he knows what's happened. You mean you're going to blast him? That's right. He sure took on a tall order. Who's going to do it for you? You are, Whitey. Oh, yeah? How are you going to get him here? Well, that's very easy. He's coming here. Coming here? I've tipped him off that a new mob is going to cut in on him. I let him find out my name and the address of this room. He ought to be here in a minute. You and Johnny ought to meet him outside. He'll be coming up with the lieutenant right into a trap. But I want Cannonball Jerry brought to me alive. I don't care what happens to the trigger man. It ain't going to be an easy job. Well, you're not afraid, are you, Whitey? I ain't afraid of nobody. But I've been strictly a stick-up artist. Ain't never had a bump off a guy before. Mm -hmm. We'll take a couple of the boys with you. You won't have too much trouble. And hurry up. <laughs> What goes on here? What's your game? The boss wants to see you get in. Oh, you must be the terrible cannonball, Jerry. Nice of you to come visiting me. Who are you? I ain't never seen you before. Hmm? I'm the man you were going to take care of. It's 
except that the tables were turned. Where's the trigger man, Whitey? I had to slug him. Tell him he's outside doing spot duty. In case any, uh, Jerry's pal show up. Excellent. Jerry, you've killed a lot of people in your life, haven't you? I ain't got no beef with you. You haven't? But didn't you come here to kill me? No, I wasn't coming to see you. I never seen you before. You're not going to bump me. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Jerry. I'm not going to leave here alive. I wasn't going to kill you. Uh, I was only going to scare you. You've got to believe me, please. Let me go. I'll have a body. Well, well, well. Running through the country. Breaking down completely. Let me go. I leave the city. I'll never come back, I swear. All right, you'll leave the city and you'll never come back. Never. Shall I let him have it now, boys? Ain't no sense of wasting time. In a second. We'll give Cannonball a chance to compose himself. You ain't going to get away with it. You'll be following me. You ain't going to get away with it. Here you are, Whitey. Use this silencer. Go ahead. No! No, don't shoot! I get out! Oh, okay, boy. I mean, better get hurt. It. Is this the first man you've killed? Uh, yeah, it's, it's my first. How do you feel? I don't think you You've just ended a man's life, Whitey. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't it make you feel powerful to be able to lop off 30 years of someone's life in a second? Yeah, no, 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 no. All right, all right. A bit upset. But tomorrow we move in on Jerry's business. Come on. We'll go home. I hope you sleep well. As well as I will. <laughs> later now, in the small hours of the morning. Lodge is asleep, tosses in his bed, is he? Here's a familiar voice. Hello, Mr. Lodge. Huh? Who, who is there? It's me, Sam. Sam? Sam Edwards? No. How, how did you get here? You, you are dead. Yes, I'm dead. But I came back. I thought maybe you wanted to ask me a few more questions. You, you came back? Oh, I can't be. I, I must be dreaming. I came back to tell you I was sorry about going to pieces. I was scared then. But I'm not scared anymore. Dead people aren't afraid. Uh, I'm not here to ask you anymore. You told me everything. No, I didn't answer your last question. You asked me if I was full of remorse. Mm, no, you, you don't have to answer that. I, I knew. The remorse ate into me like acid. It was unbearable. I couldn't stand it. It drove me crazy. It made me hate myself. I just can't describe how it felt. No, I... I guess that about covers everything. It doesn't, Mr. Lodge. I was going to tell you about my last few minutes alive. I I don't want to hear anymore. You know, Mr. Lodge, I was thinking, if you want to find out how it feels to kill someone, the best way is to do it yourself. Do it myself? I'm no murderer. I wasn't a murderer either until the first time. I'm a weak man, but you're a strong one. You'd enjoy it. Your conscience won't bother you. No, no, I'll never, I'll never kill anybody. You never can tell. Murder. It's an experience you've never had. It's really so easy. Quiet. You won't have to ask questions. You'll know all about it yourself. What's in my heart? Where, 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 where am I? Oh. Oh. I'm dreaming. I've been having a nightmare. I'll say you were. You kept talking in your sleep. What? What did I say? You kept repeating, I'm no murderer. I'll never kill anybody. What? 
I've never talked in this sleep before. It's been a vivid dream. Herbert, you've got to stop this horrible research of yours. You can't go on. You'll either get a nervous breakdown or, or actually kill someone. Oh, please, Herbert, I'm sorry. This is none of your affair, Margaret. I told you before not to interfere. This is my affair. I'm not going to stand by and watch you get yourself deeper and deeper in this rotten business. Oh, you make me tired. <laughs> Maybe I can help. There's nothing that you can do. I told you before, I don't want you to bother me. I don't know what's come over you. It's just impossible to talk to you lately. You, you act as if you hate Well, me. I don't like you standing around staring at Ever me. Ever since you got involved with those gangsters, you've begun to act like one. I warn you, Margaret, don't make things any worse than they are. True. You've become a criminal. You think like one and act like one. Keep quiet. I won't be quiet. You've made life unbearable for me. You treat me as if I were just in your way. I, I don't recognize you anymore. You've become a hoodlum, a vicious, ruthless hoodlum. I have, have I? Well, then I'm going to act. Oh! Oh! Now, get out. Get out before I lose my temper completely. Get out. You're no better than the worst of your gang. You don't like your doing anymore. You can't. Oh, yeah. Get away Once from me. Once and for all, I'll... Get away from me. I won't hear that silly, nagging voice of yours anymore. I'll, I'll never hear it again. Now you keep quiet. Margaret. Margaret. She's just unconscious, that's all. Unconscious. Get up, Margaret. I I didn't mean it. You you know I didn't mean it. I I just lost the temper for a minute. Say you forgive me. Please. Talk to me. I, I told you I was sorry. I tried to revive her, too. Bring her back to life. Sam. Once I started, I couldn't stop myself. I had to do it. Yeah, I... I couldn't help myself. My hands went for her throat as if they weren't my hands. Yes, yes, that's it. I didn't hate her. She got on my nerves. Yes, I, I didn't hate her. I didn't. I, I killed her. 